Hi, I'm Jeremy Dulaban. I'm the director of training here at Four Paws for Ability. I've been training dogs professionally for 24 years and the last 17 years have been here at Four Paws. As director of training, I oversee all activities related to training from birth to placement all the way through retirement. I work with the families and trainers to ensure our families and our dogs have a great partnership. This video will give you a snapshot into what we do to get our dogs ready to help their families. Our families put in a lot of work fundraising and preparing for the time they will be paired with their dog. And at the same time, Four Paws puts in a tremendous amount of work that starts even before the pups are born. Hi, my name is Erin Bittner. I'm the Director of Socialization and Genetics here at Four Paws for Ability. Long before you come to meet your service dog, our breeding program is working hard to create happy, healthy, confident dogs with a sound temperament. All of our dogs are bred and whelped here on site. The success of our program rests on our breeding dogs. When selecting breeding dogs, I'm looking for the dogs who exemplify all of the qualities we would like to see in future generations. A model service dog. Health is a critical component of our program. Our ultimate goal for every dog we produce and place as a service dog is for them to have a successful, full working life. They undergo cardiology testing, hip and elbow x-rays, as well as any known DNA testing for all breeds that make up the dog. When matching up a breeding pair, I'm looking at all of the collected data, looking back at what their lines have produced, looking back at their previous litters, as well as the individual strengths and weaknesses of each dog. The strengths, personalities, and temperament are a direct correlation of our clients' needs. We believe in order to place our best service dog, that everything we do here at Four Paws builds on the foundation that is our breeding program. So as Erin explained, we put great effort into our breeding program to give our dogs the best chance to be successful. So once they are born, their training begins. Uh, we start uh, right away with handling exercises with the dogs. We handle them from their nose to the tip of their tail, everywhere in between. Um, at an early age, we have volunteer and staff that are interacting with the dogs. As we raise the puppies in our early puppy development, uh, we're constantly changing uh, what we're getting the puppies used to with new toys and new uh, people all the time. So we do have lots of different activities for the puppies, exercises that the puppies are uh, experiencing, such as children's toys. The more things they experience, the more likely they are to have the confidence required to help children and veterans with disabilities. So children's ride on toys, uh, sound effects toys that the children have. Uh, we always want to encourage that. So we also try to socialize the puppies around many different uh, animals. We do have resident cats that live at our uh, puppy house. So ever since the puppy's eyes are open, uh, they're encountering uh, cats. Uh, one thing that a lot of people never think about is dogs' interactions with other animals. But we have to ensure that the dogs are comfortable and confident with other animals. Uh, at four weeks of age, we start taking the dogs out into the public to start socialization. We always try to encourage as many people to pet the dogs as possible, as many interactions as possible, but we always want to ensure that they're positive experiences because this is what's going to uh, really make a very good service dog. So we have the breeding, we have the socialization, and eventually we have the, the training. So the key to socialization uh, is trying to create as many positive memories as possible. Because when a dog encounters something when they're working with the family, maybe at two years of age, uh, what they are going to do is they're going to flip through kind of their mental Rolodex and look for a memory. So it's pretty critical, whether it's with the university program or traditional foster families or volunteers when they take the dogs out, that the dogs experience as many possible new things positively as possible. Um, I'm Jessica Paragon. Henry. I've been with Four Paws for Ability for over eight years. Um, I am a head trainer and I'm going to be talking to you guys about our traditional foster and our college foster programs. So our college program is a program where we have students foster dogs typically for about a semester. The dogs live with the students, they go with them to classes and to the movie theater and to stores and to restaurants and the focus for the dog is socialization. So our goal is to get the dog around as many new positive experiences as possible and by living with a student they're able to encounter many new positive experiences. Going to class is very important because a lot of our placement dogs go to class with their child so they get a head start in being in a classroom environment with the college student. 
This might be that they have to use public transportation, so they're getting on a bus and they're riding the bus to class, or they're walking through a city and they're on the sidewalks and the crossroads uh, as they walk through a city. In between classes, they're going potty, they're taking a little break. A lot of the campuses have specific service dog parks for the dogs to go relieve themselves and to also kind of blow off a little steam, play and be puppies for a little bit. The classrooms are playing videos and they're having presentation and people are clapping and so it's a lot of new things all the time. The students weekends also are really great opportunities. A lot of the college programs have, um, they're a group on campus so they get together and they have meetings and they'll also have outings where a group of students will go to the zoo together with their dogs and so that's a new experience for the dog. Another thing it does is it creates a great camaraderie with other students that are in your program. You, I've seen so many students who have lasting lifetime friendships that come out of that program just because of the bond they created through fostering dogs. This is the whole point and the whole goal is to be able to see this dog with this family changing their lives. And so while it might be a little sad that I don't get to see him every day, it just is so heartwarming to know they're out there doing what they're meant to do. My name is Britt Inslee. I'm a senior trainer at Four Paws for Ability, and I focus heavily on the placement and the post placement of the training of our dogs at Four Paws for Ability. The dogs' lives are always changing, just as our lives are forever changing, whether it's because we move, we're bringing them into new situations they haven't encountered, and that's what myself and the Four Paws team is here for. We're here to help you walk you through those steps to prepare yourself as the handlers and the dogs to be most successful in those situations. Our best results come from those clients and families that understand that the practicing with their dog continues after they leave Four Paws. Four Paws places our dogs on a three unit team, the client, which is the child, handler, which is one of the family members or another adult, and the dog. So the dog is only part of the team. Although they are fully trained and they're doing their service dog tasks, it is responsibility of the handler to maintain their skills in going out and practicing in the community in different situations. To ensure your service dog upholds all its training once you leave Four Paws, we are here to support you. Our commitment to you, your family, and the dog is lifelong. Hi, my name is Jennifer Lutz and I'm the Associate Director here at Four Paws for Ability. One of my primary responsibilities here is to help you figure out this process is the right fit. One of the things that I do is client coordination. So within my job, we understand that this is a daunting process, the decision to be able to have a service dog meet the needs of your child. You're welcome to go ahead and submit an application on our website. The application has some different portions for you to complete and some portions for um, a doctor and some references to complete. Once we get that information, We'll then be contacting you to do a phone interview to discuss the needs that you have within your family and the ways that a service dog could help. Once you've been accepted into the program, Four Paws has a funding requirement, and once you meet that funding requirement, you're put into a placement training class. Our placement training classes happen throughout the year, and we are more than happy to help you throughout this process and be able to meet the needs of your family's experiencing. I'm Karen Shirk. I'm the founder and CEO of Four Paws for Ability. I am so glad that you're considering one of our dogs. As a service dog user, I can say without hesitation that it's one of the best decisions that I ever made. But these dogs are not like Lassie coming in to save the day. Having a service dog is a lot of work, but when, with time and effort, it can be an amazing experience. Our dogs, when placed with you, are like a college student graduating. They're ready to go out and start their career. Every service dog is only as good as their handler. It takes time, patience, and practice. When you put this into the dog, you will find a world of four paws magic awaiting you. Please, if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us.